What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And man, I'm excited today uh, to bring you uh, an- another exciting interview, man. This is a this is a gentleman I've seen just operate on social media, but I've also seen, you know, just his character, just his passion, and, you know, just, just seeing the great work uh, that he's been doing. And man, with, without further ado, I want to I int- introduce... Coach Hurts, yeah, 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 yeah. Co- co- coach, Coach, how you how you feeling today? Oh uh, man, I'm I'm good, man. You got you got me up early, but it's 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 all good. It's all good. Yeah, man. You okay, Coach? So I'm 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 gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and get at you real quick. You said I got you up early, but you was on the you was the one hopping on here. You was on here five minutes early. So what so what you over there talking about, Coach? <laughs> no, nah, man. I'm just giving you a hard time, man. I'm just happy to uh, be a part of what you got going, man. Definitely, definitely, Coach. So, uh, Coach, for those who, who may not know you, just, just give a brief snapshot, you know, just, just who you are and a, and a little bit about, about what you do. All right. Well, uh, as, as you said before, uh, my name is Avery I Hurts. Uh, I'm a high school football and baseball coach at uh, Channel View High School. And, uh, you know, I got a passion for working with the youth, you know, just changing lives. And that's pretty much just a short synopsis on myself if I had to give you a snapshot. Yeah, there, there, yeah, there it is. There it is. So, when did you like? When did you know? All right, well, let's let's take a step back. So, how how, how did you how did you first get into sports? Uh, well, I mean, I have a I have a sports family. Uh, my dad was coaching football. Well, my dad really uh, pursued professional football, and he tore up his knee uh, right around the time I was born. Him and my mom birthed me. So, uh, at that point in time. You know, with his football career, was at the point of no return because his knee was no more good. So uh, he actually started coaching the year I was born. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he had to provide for his family. But, I mean, he always had a passion for the game. And, uh, I mean, every, I, I, I grew up in the game. So that's, that's pretty much what it is. I've always been around it. Um, like, I always tell a, a funny story. When I was younger, I didn't even go to daycare. I was always with dad for the summer. You know, I'd be running around the weight room and hitting my head on bars and stuff. Oh. And he used to make me walk around and with a with a bike helmet, had me looking like a, a special kid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I, I've I've been I've been around the game my whole life. So wow, wow. So ha- so have you always had had the passion that to to like work with the youth and to help the youth, or that's something that came later? Well, <clears throat> like I said, because I've always been around it, I've been able to see the I've been able to see a direct impact that my, my dad has had on kids, mm. you know, and uh, especially uh, an African-American uh, community or just the, the minority community. A, a, lot, of, a lot of us uh, don't have those two parent households or, you know, uh, uh, a male figure in our life to, uh, you know, lead us to right away from wrong and, you know, give us the advice that we may be searching for, or the clarity that we may need sometime. And uh, my dad has done that over the years for a lot of people. And, you know, growing up and then actually being able to play for him when I was in high school, I was even able to see it from a, from a, a clear standpoint because he's having that type of impact on my friends, you know, the ones I, I call my own. So, you know, it, it, was, it was probably around the point of uh, – Fifth, sixth grade, where I realized that I like this is this is what I want to do. Mm. Wow, you said in fifth or sixth, fifth or sixth grade. Yeah, man, I've, I've been around the game my whole life. It's it's really it's really all I know, and it's funny because I didn't start out playing I didn't start out playing football until the, the sixth grade. Like I was a baseball baseball and basketball kid, and I I played both of those all throughout the duration of high school, but. Like I said, football was the one the one that I was around from from the beginning to up until this point. So Wow. 
So how does it feel for you now that you're you're like now that you're in this position and you knew that you know this is what you want to do and you're seeing the impact like that you had like ha, like how does that feel now coming full circle? I mean, it feels awesome because uh, it, it feels it feels as though I'm living in my purpose. You know, uh, I had the opportunity to go and go back to school and work as a grad excuse me work as a grad assistant at my alma mater where I, uh, where I play football in college. And, uh, you know, the opportunity was great. Uh, you know, I, I was looking at it as a, as, a, uh, as a vessel for me to be able to learn and acquire more knowledge so that, you know, when I went back to the high school level, where if I decided to continue that collegiate, that collegiate path, you know, I could build on what I had already had set before me. Uh, but uh, I chose not to go that route just because, um, well, it was a, it was some other unforeseen things too. Like uh, I'm getting married in January. You know, I had certain bills I had to pay, and you know, um, in the coaching world, a lot of people know when you when you uh, pursue the grad assistant role, uh, the pay is not all that great. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was a it was somewhat of a sacrifice. Uh, you know, I sacrificed some of the knowledge I may have been able to get, but uh, I realized that it, you can get knowledge anywhere if, if you just have the thirst or you know to, to seek it so I decided to stay where you know my passion was and that was with the youth I, I always had this thing in my mind it's like the adolescent stage those those high school years you get kids and they're very very hard-headed but uh a lot of those kids you can get through as opposed to a kid that's in college that you know is his on the verge of manhood, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to impact those kids before they get there so that they make the, the right decisions before it's too late. Yeah, most definitely. Well, first, man, I I mean, I saw how you did the engagement and I, I, def I definitely want to say congrats, man. I seen I seen y'all both dressed up, you know, look, looking real good. I, I, I seen you, you know, had the hair tight. <laughs> wow, I said, I said, ooh. <laughs> hey, man, appreciate that. Yeah, man. So, so congratulations, man. Cause I, I've been married what now? Now four months. About to be about to be five. Um, so that's def definitely exciting. Yeah, man. But uh, yeah, I I mean I've spoken to you know like a like a lot of people who who are in 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 those grad assistant roles, and it's a crazy sacrifice, man. Right. I mean, I, I know I know cats who who. Uh, they don't even have a place to stay. Like they, they live in the facility. They live in the facilities. So they go to sleep where they work and they wake up and get right back to it. It's just, it's, it's tough. Ooh, yeah. And you know, and I think that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I, I can do this for a certain, I can sacrifice this or, or we, we don't have to see it as sacrifice. Cause I like to switch it to think of it as an investment because something like that, you know, is, is, is an investment. But then also for you on the other side, like I, I mean, I commend you for, for, for just making a wise decision because you're like, okay, I'm, I'm making my impact where I want to make my impact right now. And, you know, just getting ready for marriage, getting ready for like for, for like for some other things. But long, long term, do you do you see yourself like long, long term? Do, do you see yourself continuing to coach at the high school level or do you see potential elevation? Uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to say no, just because you got to be open and, and very optimistic and from that standpoint, because uh, like I said, if, if you have a thirst for knowledge, you know, if, if you're out seeking the knowledge to better yourself as a coach, you know, there's always going to be an opportunity for you to elevate. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, obviously, I don't want to be an assistant coach for the rest of my life. I'd like to one day have my own program, and I'm actually working at the high school where I play with my for my dad. Mm. Uh, so, you know, I, I get to. At first, when I saw him, it was it was a kid viewing coach. But now, as a coach, I get to see coach as coach. Mm. And he's he's my boss. So um, it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things that I'm learning, uh, and a lot of things that I'm taking, and you know, adding to kind of my portfolio and uh, you know my way of doing things because you know I'm still I'm still a newbie in this. It's this was my third my third year. I started off. Uh, working or coaching at the middle school. I've always taught at the high school, but I coached at the middle school my first year. And then uh, I got promoted the following year uh, to 
the offensive coordinator for the, for the freshman team. And then the next year, I got promoted to the head coach. And uh, we've been doing some we've been doing some good things, uh, you know. But through those years, it's it's been some elevation. So I plan on continuing doing that. I just I can't tell you exactly what the future holds later on down the line. But definitely, I do want to be a, a high school head football coach. Nice, nice. So I'm curious to hear to hear this from you, cause so I so I work with my dad in 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 his business, like on you know on the backside social media administrative type stuff. But Coach Hurts, I'm curious to hear from you, man. And because I, I I know student athletes out there listening, maybe coaches out there listening, assistant coaches, grad assistants, whoever it might be. But h- how do you handle t- taking that feedback? When, when it comes from your dad, but who at the same time is your head coach, like how how, how is that? As a, as a player or as a as a coach? As, now now as a coach. So so now as you coaching with him, how do you how do you handle that feedback? Um, I mean, I, I feel like I would hand I handle it just as well as any other coach. But uh, sometimes for myself, it's hard to separate dad from coach, you know, and, uh, but I'm, I'm very, I'm very appreciative of it because, and throughout this whole process it's given me the opportunity, you know, to kind of find myself mm. and, and find my own voice. You know what I'm saying? Uh, cause it's my dad and my dad is a big, is a big disciplinarian or he was. Mm. So, uh, a, a lot of times, man, I, I kind of not necessarily grew up in fear, but I just, I really valued his opinion and what he thought. Uh, you know, I would always want that, that conf- or that affirmation from him yeah. to, for him to let me know that, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and things of that nature. But I mean, now, now I've grown, so I have to kind of move away from that, that mind frame and, uh, you know, find my own voice. Cause like I said, I'm about to, about to be a, a husband, uh, homeowner and I'm about to really be out here in the, in the real world. And, you know, I can't, I can't allow myself to box my mind and my way of thinking because of coach hurts that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, so I'm, I'm 32 now and I've come to the, I've, I've wrestled with that like myself just with the fact of you know my like my dad is is my boss on 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 one side but then you know i got on the other side like you kind of doing your own thing but it's like you know dad dad is boss so man when it came when it came to me finding my voice the the biggest thing for me was that it was it was finding a way to communicate with him Mm -hmm. but still at the same time still be respectful yeah yeah and like and like it's it's a, it's a, it's almost like a, a, a mind thing. You gotta, you gotta kind of grow the courage to get over that fear. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, approaching them in a way that you might not have before, or, or start up a conversation that you might not have in the past time. Yeah. You know, and, and just hope that he respects what you're saying because at, at the end of the day, y'all are counterparts in in the workplace. Although you're you're the boss, you know, you you have to listen. You, and I'm, you don't have to, but I mean, the good ones, they listen to, you know, their assistants because yeah. their assistants, you know, help keep the, the program running and do the, some of the small things that, that kind of go unnoticed sometimes. So I just had to keep that in mind when, when approaching him about certain things, you know, like at the end of the day, he's going to have his opinion, but the, the best way to get through all, all of these things is just to, to actively communicate effectively, you know. Yeah, man. And I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it's like, it's just con- the, the continuing to allow, to allow myself to grow. And, and then sometimes, you know, it's, it's pushing boundaries, but then, you know, get into a place to where it's like, okay, well, you know, well, he, 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 he respects my opinion. So therefore he wants to hear it more. So, but I also have to understand that just because what I think is right, isn't all isn't always gonna be you know isn't always gonna be what's best at at that time. So right. yeah, I'm, I'm 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 with you. I'm I'm with you, man. But coach, I wanna I wanna ask you this though, because I know um, for you having dual roles, be, being a coach, but then also being being a teacher as well. Trying to see like 
how do you effectively lead in in the classroom setting knowing that students are coming from all different you know backgrounds socio socio economic statuses let me say it like that yeah well um the thing with that in the classroom you know i, I do i do my best to treat every every and I say I don't want to word this like uh, the the wrong way, like you were saying. But I do I do my best to be uh, as char as charismatic as I can in regards to dealing with each kid because a lot of the kids uh, a lot of the kids are rough around the edges, you know, and they have issues at home that they might bring to school. So uh, I try and be uh, delicate with that. But I mean, at the end of the day, I have to treat all of them with respect. And I have to, I have to be kind, you know, and and listen, you know. Uh, a, a, a lot of a lot of times, uh, a lot of times, uh, I see my counterparts at the schoolhouse. Uh, you know, they're so caught up in their ways. It's either this way or no way. But it's, it's good being having having that discipline and that culture in your classroom. But at the same time, you have to you have to find ways to relate to your students because that's when you're going to get the most productivity out of them you know uh <clears throat> giving them an opportunity to be heard uh giving them an opportunity to you know just be themselves and not not this robot that you're trying to create because not every kid is going to operate the same not every kid and and i'm a special education teacher so and in the in not in my world as a teacher uh, each individual student may have a set of accommodations mm. and that's one student's accommodations might not be the same as this student's accommodations but the goal in the end is for them to both get to the same finish line so you know uh whatever it might take for this one student accommodation wise i'm going to make sure that i get it done for that student likewise for this student although they may be different so it's just finding ways to reach the audience in entirety rather than just, you know, the ones that you like or the ones that don't give you the problems. Man, how, like how how have you found ways to relate to your like some of your students? Because like I know that is a like a real thing mm -hmm. um, with, with students coming from all over, you know, students looking all different ways. And so how, like how, how like what's, what's what's something that you've been able to do to, to relate to, to like some of your students? Well, one thing that I did, I sacrificed my my Instagram account. Uh, you know, a, a lot of a lot of educators like to live life in private uh, outside of school. I opened up my Instagram account and made it public, and I try and be a a model a model for the kids uh, on social media. You know, I might post something funny or you know something kind of motivational or you know, something where I can interact with my kid. And, and when I say interact, I don't mean, you know, I'm DMing my students or anything like that, but they can see me, mm. you know, they can, they can see me live life a certain way. And, you know, we come back to school the next day. Hey coach, hey, I, I saw this on your Instagram page or da 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 da, da or, you know, something like that, that'll definitely start a conversation or we can take it from there to like in my classroom, uh, I like to think of myself as a as a hip young teacher, okay. so I like to have <laughs> I like to have you know music or, or stuff playing while we're you know in in classroom mode, uh, just to to keep them going. You know, mm. I I do my best to be different from just the the, the normal teacher, finding ways to you know maximize the pro the productivity of of every student. Yeah, I mean I think I mean I think that says a lot about you um just as an individual because it's you know it's easy to you know you have your you have your objectives i, I think it is right you got your objectives and then you know you have it laid out and it's just okay these are the objectives let's get it done these are objectives let's get it done and so just you know j just operating like that if it's a classroom or even if it's somebody coaching somewhere like that's great to have a game plan mm -hmm. but but then there comes a time where you sometimes have to call call an audible. Got to, got to, definitely. Yeah. So, so man, just 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 understanding that, man, I, I definitely commend you on on on, on what you're doing. Uh, and and I didn't even know you're a, a special education teacher, so I know that you have to have. Do do you have like high patience? 
or, or are you very like you just go with the wind? You you gotta have high patience in in this area, and you gotta have thick skin. Uh, but in all honesty, uh, the the special education population of kids, mm -hmm. those are my favorite kids out of all the kids at the school. Man, they, they just they're they're funny and they are. Mm -hmm. they are uh they don't have a filter mm. so they, they go give it to you raw they go <laughs> don't tell you how they feel but i mean at the at the end of the day that's how you want it because you know you got you got to come with your best every time every time every time so uh you know they they keep me on my toes but they also help me grow so wow man i think you said a lot with the with the no filter cuz i think a lot of times um, growth can be stunted like that um, mm -hmm. without a filter. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm hearing you say that, and then I'm just tying it back to what we were talking about earlier, like, like with you working with your father, because I think that there, there's a point in a place to where those who are honest are those who help us grow the most. But then when we pull back certain stuff, it's like, okay, I'm not going to say this because this might hurt their feelings. I'm not going to say this because, you know, this could make somebody feel a certain way. Of course, no filter but still using that with discretion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. That's a word right there, man. You write that, write that one down. You can do a sermon on that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, yeah, I, I mean, I think, because I think it, need, it needs to happen more often because, okay, so the, so the best example that I can think of, and this, this is, this is I, I guess this is showing my age a little bit, but like thinking of, you know, those people who go through American Idol, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're they're auditioning, and then they're singing, and then they start looking at them when they make it to the big stage, and they're like, "Who told you you could sing?" <laughs> and then they're like, "Well, my mom told me, my my family told me," and it's like, "Well, somebody should have told you sooner that you don't have this like like this. This ain't for you. Like you might be a great football player, but you." This ain't this ain't your lane, and and I and I think a lot of times that's how people get set up for failure because nobody tells them, so nobody's honest soon enough. Yeah, no no doubt, <clears throat> and uh, and especially in the in the coaching field, you know, you you got to be honest with your kids because you don't want them having a false sense of hope or a, a false idea of who they are, especially on a high school level because these kids are still trying to fit, find themselves. Like, mm -hmm. I'm. I'm 25 years old and sometimes I, I kind of question my identity because, you know, it's ever changing. And it's certain factors in life, you know, that, that kind of change your way of thinking and how you might approach something. So, you know, I, I, I don't expect a kid on a high school level to be in tune with, with who they are as a, as a person. And uh, so as a, as a coach, just, just like my spare kids with me, you know, you got to give it to them raw. Although it might not be something that they want to hear, uh, they're, they're going to they're going to appreciate you for it in the long run. Like I said, uh, seeing seeing my dad coach through the years, you know he's created lifelong relationships with former students, and they come back just every so often just to say thank you. Mm. Like, and, and that speaks volumes to me, and that's that's the type of impact that I want to have on individuals you know, later on down the line. And I mean, I've already started my work in, in that field, you know, uh, but it, it, it's rewarding. It's rewarding in the end because not all, not all of the students are going to be NFL football players, but at the end of the day, they're going to be husbands. They're going to have a job. They're going to have families that they have to provide for. So we do our best to instill those, those values in them so that they can be good human beings uh, post high school, or well, during high school, but most most definitely post high school. We, we just want to shape good young men that provide. Mm. So that's your sermon right there. So go, uh -huh. go ahead, write that one down. <laughs> I, got my, I got my pad right here oh, too. In, in, in true coaching form, in true coaching form. Man, well, Coach Hurts, man, this has been good. I, I, I definitely appreciate you taking the time um, but, you know, I can't let you get out of here with, without running you through the two-minute drill. I know in practice y'all always run through the two-minute drills just when, just in case for when the situation comes up. So, Coach, are, are, you, are you ready for, for the two-minute drill? Let's do it, man. I'm trying to win. Man, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's make it happen. 
Here we go. Favorite food? Oh man, hey, yeah. can I call time out? <laughs> 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 nah, uh, shoot, man, what kind of food? I like it all, man. All of them. Can I? Can that be an answer? Okay. All okay. Of them. All of, I see with the grill back there. Okay. Uh, a book that you're currently reading. Um, uh, Michael Todd has the. Uh, dang, man, I, I forgot the title. Relationship goals. Relationship goals. Yeah. Right. Relationship goals. Uh, my fiance. My fiance bought it for me because I was doing the five day challenge on the Bible app. Mm. Uh, so it, it's an interesting read. I got a bunch of friends reading it, so I'm looking forward to reading it. That's good. Okay. Your your quarantine Netflix show of preference. Uh we've been watching All American. Mm, I need to I need to get on there. Okay, okay. We're, we're a little late, but we, we playing catch up, so it's all good. I mean you got time. All, all time favorite movie. All time favorite movie, any given Sunday. Mmm. Willie Beeman. Okay. You're yeah. your <laughs> steaming Willie Beeman. Yeah. Okay, your favorite quote. Favorite quote, uh, the Martin Luther King, uh, the dark, the dark and light quote. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. The darkness and light. Yeah, I can't remember it either. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll put it up. We'll put it up on the screen. And then what what what's one tip you want to share with with the student athlete? One tip. You got you got time. Take your time. You got time. Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna give you two, but I'm a, I'm. A, I'm gonna match them together. Okay. Don't be scared to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Ask it's, it's no such the, the only dumb question is the one you don't ask. Mm -hmm. You need you need that clear that clarity. But uh to provide you with that clarity, man, write stuff down. Write stuff down because you know, a lot of us have good ideas or good thoughts, and we just think about them and then just let them fall by the wayside. Put stuff on paper so you can come back to it and you know create certain goals for yourself and that'll help that'll help you a, a lot along the way there it is there it is man and, and I, I'm, I'm not sure if, you, if you've seen the the statistic or not coach but the people who the people who say they want to achieve the people who say they want to achieve goals but then never write it down i think they're like 12 percent on achieving it but then the people who end up writing it down they're like 75 more percent. And then when the people who say it, write it, and then they end up following with the action, like it's a crazy, it, it, it's a crazy stat to see how, right. how powerful writing goals down is, then taking the action, and then also like having somebody to hold you accountable. So yeah, I, I, I said all that just to say that was really good. But um, so, so, I had a brain for it. That wasn't my, my favorite quote. My favorite quote, and uh, I got this from a, uh, from a, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Okay. Well, uh, uh, T'Challa's dad told him uh, that a man who hadn't prepared his son to live after his death has failed as a man. Oh. I, I like that one. I, I really like that one. I, I liked it so much so that I had to write it down when I came across it. That is a good one. Yeah. Golly. Wow. <laughs> nah, I mean, that because... <clears throat> because he hearing that quote makes just makes me think of this because I, I always just think of the the impact of impacting a, a man or a young boy because that boy eventually will be a dad will be a husband yeah and then that's a legacy coming behind them and if they don't have the right information or if they don't have information that's needed for certain situations then that's going to be uh, negatively impact more than likely that's going to be a negatively impacted legacy until somebody comes and breaks it exactly hearing hearing you say that i'm like golly because i'm just thinking about you know a child who might be without father or father figure or you know without a coach hurts and it's like somebody got to get to him somebody yep. oh my goodness oh wow wow <laughs> You, you 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 left something on me to say, Coach. So now, where where can people where can people connect with you? How can people uh, follow you and continue to follow the work that you're doing? Um, I mean, uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter and uh, Instagram. My handle is the same, uh, Coach Hurts too. Uh, yeah, and and that's I can connect with me on there. Uh, 
I follow back. Uh, not my not my students. I I, I gotta wait till they till they graduate. But uh, but yeah. Uh, you guys got any questions uh, or any advice that you're willing to give, man? I'm I'm open ears because iron shopping's iron. Like I said, uh, it's no such thing as a, as a dumb question. Only the one you don't ask. So I'm just I'm just out here trying to grow myself. There it is. There it is. Coach hurts too. On all, well, I'm not going to do you like that. But on Instagram and on Twitter, Coach Hurts, too. Gotcha. Gotcha. Coach, well, thank you for, for, for taking the time, hanging out with us. Um, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really encouraged by, by what you're doing. And I can tell that you believe in doing things the right way, uh, just as you're going through the ranks. And, and, and even as, you, as you're getting your stuff and, and your ducks in a row, man, so I, I definitely want, want to commend you from one man to another because, uh, you, like you said, you're about to be a, a new homeowner. You say you're about to get married, so just just doing things the right way. So, Coach, definitely commend the work you're doing. And if I could be a resource for you in any way, man, please, please, definitely let me let me know. Let me know for sure. Right there. Yes, sir. So, all all the ballers out there, thank you all for for hanging out with us. Um, connect with Coach Hurts, Coach Hurts too, on Instagram and on Twitter. And also, you all know you can find all things containing or all things regarding Beyond the Ball. You can follow us on Instagram at Go Beyond the Ball. All right, ballers. See you all next week. Sure. Appreciate it, man.